morning and welcome to you all. The Lord be with you. My name is Father Simon Robinson. I'm the parish priest here in the parish of Minehead. And welcome to St Andrew's Church in Wellington Square. During Advent, we have been using some of the poetry of Christina Rossetti. And again in our service today, we will hear one of her poems uh, entitled Advent, uh, which comes from 1855. And our preacher today is Father Brian Cook, one of the retired clergy of the parish. We take a moment of silence as we prepare to worship Almighty God. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, uh, known as Gaudete Sunday, and today we reflect on the life and the profound and very important witness of John the Baptist. So I'm going to light the rose candle on our Advent wreath. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, just and true, to you be praise and glory for ever. Your prophet, John the Baptist, was witness to the truth as a burning and shining light. May we, your servants, rejoice in his light, and so be led to witness to him, who is the Lord of our coming kingdom, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and King of all the ages. Blessed be God forever. Advent, 1885, by Christina Rossetti. Sooner or later, yet at last, the Jordan must be passed. It may be he will overflow his banks the day we go. It may be that his cloven deep will stand up on a heap. Sooner or later, yet one day we all must pass that way. Each man, each woman, humbled, pale, Pass veiled within the veil. Child, parent, bride, companion, alone, alone, alone. For none a ransom can be paid, a surety ship be made. I, bent by mine own burden, 
must enter my house of dust. I, rated to the full amount, must render mine account. When earth and sea shall empty all, their graves of great and small, when earth wrapped in a fiery flood shall no more hide her blood, when mysteries shall be revealed, or secrets be unsealed, when things of night, when things of shame shall find at last a name, peeled for a hissing and a curse throughout the universe, then awful judge, most awful God, then cause to bud thy rod, to blo bloom with blossoms, and to give almonds, yea, bid us live. I please thyself with thee, I plead thee in our utter need. Jesus, most merciful of men, show mercy on us then. Lord God of mercy and of men, show mercy on us then. Alleluia, alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptising if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptising. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Now I speak in the name of living God, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, in normal times, we would have sung with great gusto today the hymn, On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry announces that the Lord is nigh. I have never, ever been to the banks of the River Jordan, but I know that it's not rather very wide or indeed very deep. But throughout history, the Jordan has played a, a physical boundary between cultures and faiths. And of course, for both Jews and Christians, the Jordan is a sacred river. Through its often muddy waters, the Israelites came to reach the Promised Land. In its muddy waters, Jesus was baptised by John and proclaimed as God's Son. So it's not surprising then that crossing the Jordan has become a metaphor, particularly in gospel music, for us reaching the promised land, for our reaching of those heavenly places for which we so long. In the Advent, in the poem Advent 85, chosen by Mother Rachel Mann for this Sunday, Advent 3, Christina Rossetti med med meditates about the reality of our own crossing of the River Jordan. She writes, Sooner or later, yet at last, the Jordan must be passed. Sooner or later, yet one day, 
we all must pass that way. Each man, each woman, humbled, pale, past, veiled within the veil. And John the Baptist tells those that gather to hear him on Jordan's bank to make their path straight, to make themselves ready for the imminent coming of the Lord. And in a, symb a symbolic act, those who had turned away from sin and to help them focus their lives on godly living were baptised in its waters by John. Dying to their previous self-centred ways of life and rising to another in which they had committed to a much closer relationship with God. At our baptism, as God the Father touched us with holy water and holy oil, and God the Holy Spirit ignited the flame of faith within each one of us, profound promises were made, often on our behalf. Promises that we would repent of our sins and turn to God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And on Ash Wednesday, we receive the sign of the cross marked on our foreheads with ash, and hear again those words, turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. And we begin every celebration of the Eucharist with an, with an act of repentance, an invitation for us to turn away from sin and turn to Christ. A moment to recognise from our own heart that in our own lives, we too have areas of unfaithfulness to God. A moment for us to make our own acts of repentance, to turn away from ourselves and our sinfulness in order that our lives will again reflect God's way of being human. That way was revealed to humanity in the incarnate life of his Son, our Saviour. It's interesting that in the church tradition from which I come from, after the prayer of absolution, holy water was sprinkled, a symbol of our repentance, our reconciliation and renewal. Advent is not just for one short season in the church's year. Every day of our pilgrim life on earth should be spent in Advent watching and waiting. Watching and waiting for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this holy season of Advent calls us to unlock the things of shame that Christina Rossetti writes about in today's poem. Not only that we might rejoice at Christmas, but to give us the confidence when our Lord comes again as judge, we shall be shown mercy. As she writes, it will be a time when mysteries shall be revealed, all secrets shall be unseen, when things of night, things of shame, find at last, shall find at last a name. Bid us live, Jesus, most merciful of men. Show mercy on us then, Lord God of mercy and of men. Show mercy on us. And we live our pilgrim lives, trusting that he, when he comes again to judge us, he truly will show mercy on us. Now I usually find time during Advent to read a Christmas carol. The main character, of course, Ebenezer Scrooge, manages to demonstrate all of those human traits of self-centred, unforgiving and unloving qualities those qualities which are the very embodiment of lives lived apart from God. And after the visit to the three visions of Christmas past, present and future, Scrooge finally repents. A repentance that leads to rejoicing and a whole new awareness and understanding of himself and the world around him. His repentance brings him forgiveness 
and forgiveness enables him to love and once again rejoice in life. Genuine repentance lead us all to rejoicing. And on this God 80 Sunday, our readings talk to us very clearly about repentance and rejoicing. In our first reading, the prophet Isaiah invites us to greatly rejoice in the Lord. And we begin our Eucharist today with the antiphon from St Paul's letter to the people of Thessalonica. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice, the Lord is near. And John the Baptist is rejoicing that the coming of the one, that he is not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. Christ the Lord is close. Like Ebenezer Scrooge, our lives can be miserable and unfriendly when joy and rejoicing are absent. It is when we are willing to acknowledge the sin in our own lives and the sin that is all around us, we become estranged from the joys of rejoicing. We wouldn't expect a doctor, although we might do in these days, to be able to heal our body of his sickness if we didn't disclose and show him what was wrong with us. How can we expect to be reconciled to God if we don't resp take responsibility for the times when the self-centred, sinful and darker sides of each one of us dominates and pervades our thoughts and actions. Those times when our straight roads to God become twisted. And so in taking responsibility for our sins, having a willingness to change and offer them to God in that time of silence before the Eucharist begins. And having offered them and said the prayer of penance and received the absolution, we reopen ourselves to God's healing abundance of grace and mercy and find ourselves reorientated and refocused on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ who will not only lead us to a celebration of rejoicing. Heaven itself will be rejoicing at the repentance of so many sinners. So when sooner or later the Jordan must be crossed and we land on Canaan's side and finding ourselves standing before our Lord as judge, let us find those words of Christina Rossetti a comfort. A comfort today as they will be then. Jesus, most merciful of men, show mercy on us then. Lord God of mercy and of men, show mercy on us. And at the end of a year, when we can truly rejoice in the approval of the first safe and effective vaccinations for COVID-19, Advent has brought us hope and light and rejoicing that better times, really, better times are not really so far away. And once again, we shall be able to sing with gusto on Jordan's bank the Baptist cry. And the words of verse 2 just remind us why we are here today and why we need daily to repent from our sins. Then cleanse me every breast from sin. Make straight the way for God within. Prepare we in our hearts a home where such a mighty guest may come. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. Amen. In joyful expectation of his coming to our aid, we pray to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Come to your church as Lord and Judge. Help us to live in the light of your coming and give us a longing for your kingdom. Bless the Church Universal in her mission of sharing the good news of Jesus with all peoples.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to your world as King of the nations. Before you, rulers will stand in silence. We pray for all who lead, particularly for all political leaders and those who lead this nation. Grace them with wisdom and discernment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the suffering as saviour and comforter. Break into our lives where we struggle with sickness and distress and set us free to serve you forever. We pray for those known to us who are this day ill, struggling with life those who just do not feel right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to us, the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Give us, with all the faithful departed, a share in your victory over evil and over death. And we hold up to your throne of grace those who have died and those who today will die. Through your love and mercy, may they rest in peace. Amen. Alleluia. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give new courage to your people who trust in your love. By your coming, raise us to share in the joy of your kingdom on earth as in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Together we say, Our Lord says, I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Mm -hmm.